Kevin O'Leary's statements are likely to strike a chord with many, particularly those frustrated by the political and economic directions of liberal-leaning nations. His critique will validate the view that liberal policies are not only driving away businesses and individuals, but also undermining the economic strength of countries, once regarded as prosperous. O'Leary's remarks may also highlight the broader trend of people and companies voting with their feet by relocating to states with more business-friendly environments. This is seen as an exercise of freedom, where individuals take charge of their circumstances and make proactive decisions to improve their prospects. And here's the one thing that nobody saw coming, and this is the competition of states. I don't put companies here in New York anymore, or in Massachusetts, or in New Jersey, or in California. Those states are uninvestable. The policy here is insane. The taxes are too high. We put them in Fargo, North Dakota, mm -hmm. because 40% of the people work elsewhere, including Boston. So I was you know, a bit of a debate with Elizabeth Warren about this, but I say, look, Senator, we've got to move the companies out of your state because you're not investable anymore. You're punishing people if they're successful. You overtax them. You hit them with a super tax. New Jersey, what a mess. New York, uninvestable. In Wait, California. why is New York uninvestable? Try and do a project in New York. Try and build. A yeah, I'm asking Don's point. Is it beyond the taxes? Oh, the regulatory environment is punitive. I had a project in upstate New York behind the grid in Niagara Falls for electricity, a global data center we were building. Eventually, it got so bad with the, po the politicians in the local region and the state policy, we moved it to Norway and all the jobs. Norway has it now. Thousands of jobs coming out of that. I mean, that is, that's New York. Uninvestable. Sorry, don't shoot the messenger. Just telling you the way it is. Yeah, that's it. We, uninvestable. We some pushback from our, our elected officials in New York on that. I was going to say Kathy Hochul. Yeah. But I'll what debate it, them any time of the day you want. Uh, and we would love to set that up. AOC, that. She's great at killing jobs. She kills jobs by the thousands. You know, another New Jersey problem. Where did Amazon take their jobs? They took them away from her. She threatened to sue them if they created jobs. I mean, this is a reality. It's a reality that the there's a little more to it, but let's not really well, that. Well, no, sorry, I'm just saying the truth. He's, he's saying what a lot of people are saying, especially what happened with that Amazon thing here in New York. Just real quickly, but I don't want to pause the conversation. But what, what was Elizabeth Warren's response when you said that to her? Look, I have a lot of respect for her because it's okay to have a debate about politics, but not policy. When you have punitive policy. You're making a mistake. And I want to just put up my hand and say, I don't agree, Senator, with your policy. I respect you as a politician, a very successful one. You know, she's very successful. And that's the state where I grew my kids. I mean, our family grew up in Boston, Massachusetts. We left there to move to Florida like everybody else is because it's such a tough place. to. But, you know, this is a tough message. People really are critical about this, but somebody has to call it out because this is a competition of states now. And we don't put money there anymore. We put it in other places and jobs are created elsewhere. Over time, this is going to diminish New Jersey, diminish New York, diminish Massachusetts and California out of business, out of business. El Morte, no business there. You can't do business there. I don't know what that place is going to turn into. Maybe a tourist zone, but no business. Imagine San Francisco. You can't even walk at night out in the street. At the heart of O'Leary's critique lies a defense of low taxes, minimal government interference, and fostering environments where businesses can thrive. In states like New York, California, and New Jersey, where high taxes and heavy regulations dominate, O'Leary argues that liberal policies are suffocating innovation, economic growth, and personal freedom, rendering these places uninvestable. His analysis underscores the belief that excessive taxes and regulations hinder success and push both businesses and people to migrate to more favorable climates like Florida or North Dakota. This echoes the broader principle of limited government intervention, where the free market rather than government should drive innovation and prosperity. O'Leary's decision to shift companies to states with better business conditions appears not only pragmatic, but a responsible response to what he views as poor policy choices in traditionally blue states. O'Leary's sharp criticism of politicians like Elizabeth Warren and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez who advocate for higher taxes and stricter regulations, aligns with the notion that such leaders fail to grasp the importance of a robust business environment. To the public, these policies often come off as ideologically driven, detached from the real-world impacts felt by business owners and workers alike. The emotional toll of operating in high-tax, heavily regulated states can create frustration, leaving business owners feeling penalized rather than rewarded for their success. 
This disillusionment leads to a psychological distancing from these regions as individuals seek out places more aligned with their values and business needs. O'Leary's observations tie in with the broader phenomenon of economic migration in the U.S., where businesses and individuals are flocking to states with fewer regulations and lower taxes. This trend can be viewed as a collective response to the psychological strain of working in environments perceived as hostile to success and individual freedom. Additionally, the media's reaction to O'Leary's comments, particularly the discomfort of a CNN host, who struggled to effectively counter his points, hints at the deep ideological roots that often color media narratives. This reflects how cognitive dissonance can lead to defensiveness or avoidance when confronted with facts that challenge entrenched beliefs rather than engaging in meaningful debate.